If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the band on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. One other thing I want to do for our kitchen unit is create a little fold up table on the side here. It's going to basically fold upwards using two of these brackets here which will sit on either side. So to do this we're going to need to join it in the same way that we joined our kitchen worktop and then I'm going to route it and I'm going to put some Danish oil on it like we did before. So I've taken some measurements of the width of our kitchen unit and uh, fortunately we actually have this piece left over which was the cutout from the hob unit. So I'm actually going to reuse this piece instead of joining some new wood together. So we've cut our little table piece down size and it seems to fit the width exactly which is pretty cool so it'll be folding up like so so what I want to do is I'll probably leave this edge as it is but I'm going to route these three edges in the same manner that we did with the kitchen worktop smooth to the touch. I went down to 240 grit sandpaper by the way. You can then take your Danish oil or whatever sealant you're using. What I'm going to do is try and work out where I want this table to sit. So we need to allow a little bit of room for any of our socket leads to come down. I'm going to aim for something about it there. And here's one of our brackets and I've got it open already. Place it underneath, about there. I draw a line above it. Just to double check that we've allowed ourselves enough space from the main socket to the table. So I'm going to put this big old bulky MacBook Pro charger in, and then I can see my line here for the top of the bracket, and we can see we've got plenty of room. Alrighty, so I'm just taking that line that we've drawn, putting the bracket up there into place, draw into these little fixing holes. Then we've got a really small little drill bit here that we can drill a pilot hole with. So there we have it. So we want to do the same with the other one. So we just need to make sure that this is obviously the same height as well. So just to roughly show you then, this is what our pull-up kitchen table is going to look like. And what I want to do is put a kind of spice rack in this section here. So if we pull this down like that, it will be hidden. But then when you're using this for cooking, the spice rack will reveal itself. So next up I want to mark out the dimensions for my little spice rack. Run my pencil underneath here. Line at the top as well. So we want to basically have a little bit of an allowance between the very bottom of where the table will sit and the very top of where it will sit. Probably allow a few centimetres or so. About an inch on there. The same from the bottom so it looks nice and even. Then we're going to allow a little bit of distance in from the sides. We'll allow half a centimetre because we don't have a lot of room to play with on the side. Right, so as you can see, we've drawn out some dimensions here. Draw your dimensions to whatever size suit your needs. We're going to basically create a bit of a box that the spices will sit in. And this will roughly be our depth, actually, and then there'll be some panels behind it to stop them falling backwards. And then what we'll do is, on the front of that box, we'll create a lip. So we'll, we'll join it like that, and then we'll use that lip to purchase onto the kitchen unit, and that's how we'll fix it into place. So next up we need to mark out where our lip is going to be, we need to make an allowance for that and for my lip I'm going to make the lip 11mm 
over from our 14 millimeter thick board that we're using. I'll mark off in several places where 11 millimeters is. There's our lip all around there. So that's the bit that's going to be sticking out and that's what we're going to use to connect it to the kitchen unit itself. So this is the bit, the internal dimension here, that we actually need to go ahead and cut using a jigsaw. So there it is. Unscrew your brackets. Okay, so go ahead and create a hole for your jigsaw blade to fit into. And just very slowly go around this, following that internal line that you've drawn out. Just make sure there's nothing behind here as well that you could cut through. Next up we want to take some dimensions for the width and also the length of our spice racks. So make sure you take your measurements and then take two millimeters off each dimension. And uh, if you have anything behind here, you're gonna need to check the depth. So I've got my jerry cans here for my water storage. So I need to make sure that I can fit it in behind there. I did measure a spice bottle and I think it was 4.5 centimeters in diameter so at least allow that plus a little bit more if you've got anything a little bigger going in there. Cool so as this is some non-structural work I'm going to go ahead and use some of what I have left and I'm going to use up some of this tongue and groove board which is 14 millimeters thick and I'm going to cut it down to size yeah so use whatever you like whatever you have hanging around this is a great opportunity to use up some scrap wood but any thickness beyond that would be good. So I'm going to take the tongue and the groove parts off of this board as I'm reusing it and I'm going to cut this down to the depth that we need. So I measured by now as a maximum depth of 4.5 centimetres before I'd hit those jerry cans. Uh, I would probably allow a little bit more than that so I'd probably allow it to be at least 6.5 centimetres deep. And now we're going to go ahead and cut the length. So mine is 24.1 centimetres in length. So we're going to go ahead and mark that off and then cut two pieces to that size. And now we need to cut the width. In my example, it's 14.5 centimetres. And then you need to subtract the thickness of these two pieces of wood. So this is 14 millimetres thick. So two of these is going to be 28 millimetres. I'm going to need to take 28 millimetres off my total width and then cut that to size. It's really important that you cut all the width parts to the same size as each other and also the same with the length parts. This will ensure that you get a nice square spice rack. You can also add a little shelf in if you want to somewhere just to divide it up and then we're ready to join it all up. Cool, so I'm going to join this using pocket hole joinery and if you've never used a pocket hole jig before I've got an explanation of how to set this all up in my wheel arch boxes video so just head back to that. Um, but get it all ready, set up to the right size that you need, and then we're good to go. So this is going to be our backing board, we're using, we're using this and uh, I'm just going to have it set up like so and with these pressed together I'm then going to draw around it with a pencil and you could actually cut this with a jigsaw, it doesn't need to be totally accurate because it really that's going to be hidden the cut um, or you can cut it on a table saw. So I'm going to flip it over now, place this over here, I'm going to apply my good friend here, place the back plate on, I'm 
Just go ahead and check out that you're happy with the positioning and wipe away any excess glue. So, I'm using some 25mm long nails here. They're called panel pins. And we'll just put a few of these all around. Okay, so just a little tip when you get close to the board here with the panel pin, you can do the last few taps with a centre punch placed on top of the panel pin. And that will just stop that sort of face part of the hammer leaving a dent or a mark across your board. For this part here, because I couldn't actually fit the drill bit for the pocket hole screws, I actually went into the side with the little shelf part. Uh, with the screws. But now I'm just going to go ahead with some 60 grit sandpaper, so some really coarse sandpaper, use like 60 or 80 grit, anything like that, and uh, just go around these edges and just try and tidy them up so they're nice and flush with each other. Also, just to give you a rough idea of what's going on, this is what the spice rack is going to look like when it's sort of sat in place. Right, so like I said, we need to make a lip and I'm going to have a 1.1 centimeter lip coming out from the face here. So the thickness of my wood is 1.4 centimeters. So adding on that 1.1 centimeters needs, means I need to cut this down to 2.5 centimeters. So go ahead and cut yours to whatever size you want it. So as you can see, you'll get a little bit of a lip when this is butted up. So I'm gonna put this in place, put it right up against the edge. And I'm going to go up the side, just mark off the top and the bottom. What I'm going to do is instead of cutting it straight, we're going to go in at a 45 degree angle, sort of like that, um, just because it looks nicer that way. But we can go ahead and take that to a chop saw now and just cut those angles and then check it fits. As you can see, I've set the chop saw up to that 45 degree angle. And we can go ahead and flip it. It's pretty close, I'm going to take just a smidgen off of there again. You basically want that 45 degree angle to meet in the very corners of your spice rack. So just go around and fill all of those. There's all my angles cut. All my angles cut. So what I've done is I've just clamped it into place and I'm just checking that it definitely does all fit before we start gluing anything. This is going to be pretty hard to rectify otherwise, which it does, which is cool. So yeah, I think those 40 to 5 degree angles are really worth doing, so I think they look much nicer. So like I said, I'm just going to literally get some Gorilla Glue, and I'm going to glue this around the edges and clamp it, just like we have done here. Great, so next up then, we're just going to go ahead and sand it. I'm going to start with some 80 grit sandpaper and then move down to 240 grit. Great, so now that we have our spice rack all sanded down nice and smooth, we can go ahead and install it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some wood glue across all of these sides here and it all the way down the lip. Put that into place into place and I'm going to take some screws and I'm actually going to screw it in from the other side so I don't want these screws showing on the face because I think the face looks really good nice and clean like this so I'm actually going to go on the inside of the cabinet here and screw these in and I'm just using some 16 millimeter long screws I'm actually going to put a few clamps in here so if you can do this as well this will help you with screwing it in So, I've got a few screws in there. We can go ahead and put our brackets back on now for the drop down table. All we need to do now is now connect the actual worktop to the brackets themselves. And as you can see, there's a few little holes here to connect onto. And what I'm going to do to make my life a little bit easier, mark out those holes with a pencil. And then I'll take it off and drill the pilot holes. So now you just want to go ahead and install those screws where the pilot holes are. Go ahead 
and test it out. And we've got a little spice right there that's in place now. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper. As I mentioned before, I've just recorded my first album. We'll need all the help I can get. So I'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy. Joe Edwards, Sister Nams, and Alternate to keep on running in that one over here. It's a number of trouble. It's like a couple of shots in the news. Let's an album new show. Let's keep on running. Joe Edwards from the UK. Don't let the bastards get you down. Yeah, right. Que sale el 22 de mayo a través de Tiny Mountain Records. Aquí está Joe Edwards. Well, ain't feeling right. Been burning up in the night. Yeah, but I can't tell when it's going to end. Keep on running, God. Keep on running through the heat. Well, you got it. Well, I'm six dollars short, but my soul is clean. from home yeah but before I get there yeah